Before we get to the main material for this week, maybe it's good that we, you know, try something light as a bit of a warm-up uh, for, for more reasons than one, actually, quite literally, because I'm recording these videos in the middle of the winter time, and I'm still waiting for the room to thaw out for the day. Uh, and so let's talk about this. Let's meet a brand new type in C++. Something that's actually been a long time coming. Many of you that took CSC 111 were sort of wondering where this type was in C, why we didn't use this more in C. So if we think back to 111, we spent a lot of time in C talking about operators. Operators like plus and minus and division, but also operators like asking the question if two values are equal or not equal, or if one is less than another. Uh, and then finally, operators that chain together previous yes or no questions. So logical and and logical or, as well as a whole ton of other operators that we've been using on and off since then. So you might recall, we might be writing these long expressions chaining together various operators like this one, where I'm asking the question, is x less than y and is y greater than z? So I'm using a combination of, I've got here relational operators, less than and greater than, so determining the relationship between values. And I've got in the middle a logical operator, taking the results of two of these yes or no questions and sort of chaining them together in a certain way. We, we should recall that the logical and operator evaluates to true only if both of the two operands also evaluate to true. Now in the C language, this whole idea of true or false is couched entirely in terms of the type int. So all of these relational and logical operators always evaluate to an int. And that requires us in C to have some definition, some conception of what it means for an int to be true or false. And you might recall in the C language, we assume an int value is false if its value is zero. And literally everything else is considered to be true. So 1 is true, 5 is true, negative 1 is true, negative 999 is true. Uh, and it also turns out that when we work with conditions in C, so for example inside an if statement or a while loop condition, it's, the language expects that that condition be an int. And again, it's interpreted as false if it's 0 and true if it's anything else. Now these... Uh, Chaining together logical and relational operators, so taking these true or false values and chaining them together, so in this example here, I guess it is true that x is less than y. I guess we don't have a variable z, so we can't talk too much about that. When I talk about these true or false values and ways of chaining them together with logical operators like and and or, that is often referred to as something called Boolean logic or Boolean algebra. And that's named after a person named George Boole, who was, uh, I guess we can credit him as the inventor of this, or at least the first person to have formalized Boolean logic uh, in an algebraic sense, in terms of these operators acting on true or false values. And so it turns out Boolean logic is a really big deal because although we only see it at the surface in terms of logical and and logical or, it turns out that actually deep down beneath all of your C programs on every computer anybody has ever used, there is a lot of Boolean logic happening to perform basic operations like arithmetic, which of course is fundamental to any computer being able to work. Uh, and many of you, when you learned C, were sort of perplexed that there was no special type just for true and false values. Uh, instead, we just use int for that. And one of the reasons for that is that C is an old language, and at the time C was designed, it wasn't considered to be as big of a deal to have a special type. But those of you that learned C after some other language, so after learning Java or after learning Python, might have been confused to think, why isn't there a type like the type Boolean in Java or Boolean values in Python? And it turns out that the C language does support a sort of vestigial uh, Boolean type, but it's not part of the core of the language. Fundamentally, the logical and relational operators and if statements and while loops still expect ints in C. But that isn't true in C++. In C++, one example of a place where C++ isn't really backwards compatible is that uh, in C++, true or false values are expected to have this fundamental type, bool. So a variable of type bool may take on one of two values, and those values are called true. And you can see here that the editor has actually highlighted the word true as if to recognize that it's a special term. Or false, so yes or no, true or false. A Boolean variable can contain only those two things. Um, it's possible to convert an int to a boolean value, so the int 1 is interpreted as meaning true if I assign it to a bool. Um, I suppose I should actually try running this code at least once before I talk about this. 
So we'll ignore those unused variable warnings. And we can see here that I've assigned the value true to my variable q, and then I've used q as the content of my if statement condition. So just like how there is this fundamental type that's now part of the core of the language in C++ that can store true and false values, accordingly, operators like logical and and logical or and the relational operators and things like if statement and while loop conditions uh, work with bool values and not ints. And that means what goes inside the brackets of this if statement has has to be some Boolean expression. In this case, the value of Q just has type bool, and so I'm allowed to use it directly inside of my if statement. Um, I could also assign the value false to Q, and we could verify that indeed the if statement evaluates to false in that case. And there it is. Uh, and I could also assign to my variable Q the result of any operator that returns a Boolean value. And so an example would be the relational operator, the less than operator, uh, returns a bool in C++. And so the expression x less than y will evaluate to a bool, which will be either true or false. In this case, I expect it will be true. And there it is. Uh, and so you will notice that we often, because we now have this core feature, unlike in C, where you can get a type bool if you want one, but it's not a core part of the language. Uh, it's just part of, it's something you can bring in from the library and use if you choose to do so. In C++, relational operators, logical operators, if statement and while loop conditions all work with type bool directly. And so we'll find that we use it directly uh, starting this week. Whenever we work with yes or no questions, we will be working with type bool. So so a few other points about this. One of them is that uh, it's valid to write if q. If q has type bool, we could write that. It's also valid to convert back and forth between int and bool. So for, to allow some compatibility between the C conception of what a Boolean value is, it is valid to assign the value 0 to an object of type bool. And you can see here we still get those unused variable warnings. I'm about sick of those. We'll just comment those out. It's valid to assign the value 0 when we initialize our value bool because there is an assumption that if you coerce the integer value 0 to a bool, you will get false. And similarly, if I try and assign the value 1, that will be interpreted as true. Uh, it's also worth noting that, uh, I guess I should run it, it's also worth noting that I am allowed to convert between any integer and a bool value via assignment. So just like I can convert a float to an int, I'm allowed to try and assign the value 6 to q. And the idea here is that we end up with an int on the right-hand side, but that the int gets automatically converted to a bool by the same interpretation we would use in c, which is that anything other than 0 is considered true. We can see here q is true. However, we can notice that bool definitely is a distinct type. Because if we attempt to initialize a bool with something that makes no sense, for example, the number 111, um, although we can convert ints to bools with an assignment statement, it doesn't make much sense to try and assign an int directly to a bool at initialization. We know this is a bool. We know this is not a value that reasonably can be stored in a bool. So what are we doing assigning it? Similarly to how I am allowed to write something like int x and then x equals 5.7, but I wouldn't be allowed to write something like int x initialize to 5.7. The compiler would wonder what I'm trying to do here. And so this is some evidence that the compiler is recognizing that bool is not int. Uh, bool instead has some defined conversion, but fundamentally a bool can contain only two things. Those are true and false. And so here I'll go back to initializing my bool to be true. So one last point, it's very common to see the bool value used directly in my if statement condition, but you could always, if you wanted to, write something like this, if q equals true. And this is something that actually we would want to avoid doing in C, because we, we recall from C that the when we work with things that return true or false values, anything other than 0 is considered true. So I would want to ask a question in C, like if this equals 1. But in C++, because a Boolean value is either true or false, and that's it, it is valid to ask this question directly. And that's one of the advantages of having this type and having it be incorporated so fully into the language as we do in C++. So we'll notice in the coming weeks, Weeks, now that we've seen this, that we will be using type bool all the time anytime we're working with some kind of yes or no question.